Hi, my name is Jeremy, and on this channel I talk about color and light, and today I'm super excited to be talking about the next round of creativity. And this is the art of extraction. My goal for this channel is to help people create their own original artwork. Color studies were a great way to get into this, to get used to the tools, to start learning how to see light and color. But many people will come and say, but how do I go to the next level? I want to be creating my own original artwork with great color and great looking light, and I don't know how to make the leap from just copying something to making my own art. And I just, whenever I try to do my own work, it looks like a elementary school student painted it, and I just don't understand how to take it to the next level. This video is about this topic. In fact, I'm creating a whole new playlist. It's no longer in the color studies playlist. This will be in its own playlist about extraction and how to make this bridge to your own original artwork by using this tool. Now, extraction is to look at something and not to copy it directly, but to gain the essence of it, to, to extract from it the meaning and what light is doing, and to be able to use that change it and make something new. I've heard often the quote, steal like an artist. In fact, there's a book that's called Steal Like an Artist, and it's actually a really great book, and it has a lot of really great insights in it. In fact, a lot of different artists have said that they steal. Quentin Tarantino, I steal from every single movie I ever made. David Bowie, the only art I'll ever study is stuff that I can steal from. And my problem with the word steal is that it implies that someone's gonna get hurt that you're taking something away from somebody else. It goes along the line with plagiarism, and plagiarism, again, is the practice of taking somebody else's work or ideas and passing them off as your own. And this is not what I'm talking about with extraction. If I go outside and I paint a picture of a tree that I see outdoors, I'm not taking anything from that tree. I can sit there and I can look at the light, and there's no stealing involved. It's more like being inspired by the light that's there. We've already talked about color studies, so you can take somebody else's artwork and you can do it as a study. Don't claim this as your own. This is a piece of artwork by a guy named David Chiefitz that I really love his work. So I did a study just to learn from it. And I do more studies from other art just to learn from it. I don't classify that as my own art. Strangely enough, I could take a, a bowl and put an egg in it and paint that, and I would call this my own art, even though it's the same skill. I'm just replicating. I'm not being really imaginative and coming up with something new. I'm just learning. What if I wanted to create something like aliens playing hide-and-seek on another planet? Uh, I can't get reference for that because I can't go to another planet, sadly. What if I want to create a creature made out of plant material? What if I want to create a big spaceport in a futuristic city? I can't really paint that. It has to come out of my own head. But there's a big gap. If I want to create something new out of my own head, I have to have information in there to be able to draw from. There is a big artist myth. All of your art has to come completely from your own head, otherwise it's cheating. Well, there's a lot of people that just, wait, I don't know, I'm not talented enough, I can't see enough to be able to do this. And this is where the art of extraction becomes very important. Let's go back and look at some master's paintings. Degas from the 1800s did this beautiful artwork, and like, wow, he was just a master. But something happened back in his time period. In 1816, a new device was invented. It was called a camera. And the very first cameras were these daguerreotype, if I'm saying that right, cameras. They were very, very simple, and they made very grainy images. Degas used early daguerreotype photography. Here's the photography that he used in this painting, so you can actually see his reference. He was using reference. He was not doing things only out of his own head. Repin has some beautiful, beautiful artwork. But even if you look at his work, he was known to do photographs in order to study clothing and reference. And this is his assistant playing the part of Princess Sophia. He was using reference. It was not purely out of his own head. Andres Zorn, here's his painting, and here is the photograph that inspired that painting. So even classic painting masters of their day use tools of reference to make their art better. There's a beautiful piece uh, called The Two Sisters, done in 1843, and they found photographs in the artist's studio of these twins that he used to study them to do the painting. Even Norman Rockwell. I went to the Norman Rockwell Museum several years ago, and I could see the beautiful artworks that he hand-painted, and then right beside it, all of the photography that he used as reference. Here's a few more examples. 
Let's talk about extraction. How do we do this? How do we learn to extract something and use this? There's a process I kind of like to call Coloring Book 2.0. Every company I've ever worked for, I have gotten together with fellow artists and we've done color studies together. And at a certain point, I challenge people to the next level to practice extraction. And here's what I did. I take some line art that I like. This is uh, from Gary Larson in The Far Side. Like, take this as your, your shape reference. And then go find an image online, and I found this beautiful work from Jeremy Palatin, I think that's pronounced right. Um, I said, okay, merge these two into one. So take the essence of this painting and the shape of this drawing and come up with something brand new. And so this is a, a new piece of artwork. Now, I am stealing like an artist from Gary Larson's design, but as another study, this is the next level because I'm not just looking at pixel to pixel. I have to think about the way the light moves through you know, this atmosphere that was from that painting and how it would be applied to the hill in the car and the way the light works here. To be able to properly extract, you really have to understand light. And understanding light comes from replicating, from doing color studies. I'll show examples of extraction in some future videos so you can see what this process is like, but I think this is super fun. I created this image, and if you want to screen capture it, you can try this for yourself too. I made some line art and said, all right, let's, let's try some extraction. Let's find some other images online that are really beautiful and say, I want to take the light and the color from this painting and apply it into my coloring book. This is coloring book 2.0, but I don't want any of the lines in it. So here is the final result with just paint. Now this is a quick study. This is like a half an hour study of just like, how can I get those, the essence of this into my own painting? I like the colors of the sky. I like the colors of the clouds. I like the colors of the ground. I'm going to take those colors, but put it into my own composition. Let's try another, same composition, different colors, different light, different sunlight angles, different atmosphere. Here's another one. And you can see the reference that I'm extracting from. I'm not stealing this, I'm not copying this artwork directly. I'm just taking the essence of the color and applying it to my new composition. Here's another one that I think is very interesting because I just vaguely referenced it. I looked, I like the color, the contrast, the warm and, and cool and this kind of like green and orange type of combination. And I applied that to mine and said, well, let me be creative. What if my river was the glowing orange part and it's made out of lava? This is cool. I'm being inspired by a piece and extracting an essence of it and applying it to my own. Let's look at a couple of other examples. I like Dr. Seuss a lot and I took some of Dr. Seuss paintings and extracted from other photos some ideas of light to merge the two into something brand new. Here's another Dr. Seuss illustration that I really like Horton, from Horton Hears a Who. I can extract from other images of jungles and the way the light works and the atmosphere and make a brand new rendition of this. It's another level of studying beyond color studies where I'm like, how can I take the idea of something, not replicating one-on-one, -on -one, just the idea, and put it into a new composition. Here's another example from Dr. Seuss. What if this were a 3D set and not just line art? Could I make this look like a 3D space with actual lights in it? And this was my attempt at that. Extraction can come in many forms. It's not just about looking at the light. You can also do material studies where you keep the light the same. You say, all right, I've got this very simple line drawing and I want to make this look colored. So I'm going to look at an object and just make it flat gray, make it match this material. Do several different variations of different materials. Could even make this kind of like a gummy bear. I actually looked for a reference of gummy bears and said, what is the essence? What does, what do gummy bears under generic light look like? Can I paint that? on a new shape and get the essence of this, extract the essence of gummy bear and put it into my painting. I think that this is super fun. This is absolutely the next step that'll help in your art. It helped me in my art. I want to show one, another example with this group of people that I paint every week with, we came up with some artistic challenges I'm like, okay, paint a chipmunk for next week. And I wanted to be kind of clever with it. And so I'm like, well, I like the word monk. What if, what if my chipmunk is a monk who's eating chips? So I looked up some reference 
of a bag of chips and looked for some reference of a chipmunk and then I started sketching over top of it. What if I put a little monk outfit on him? And here's my final piece. So I took reference, smashed it together, relit it because I understand light enough. I've done enough of these studies that I could make my own lighting brand new, but I could extract the shape of the chipmunk and the shape of the chip bag and some of the you know material properties of this to come up with a brand new illustration. You can even do extraction via shapes. My son and I did something that was kind of fun. Find household items, use their shape as spaceships. So I found this flashlight and then I repainted it and put new light on it and changed some of the material properties of it and turned it into a spaceship. So extraction. This is a really fun next exercise. I'll be doing some more studies to show this in action so that you can see it in practice, but I hope that you're inspired and want to take this to the next level because this is the path to being able to create things 100% out of your own head. I can say from professional experience working 25 years that every professional concept artist that I know uses references. In fact, hundreds of images to study and say, what do I like about this? I'm studying ancient Greece go to Greece, take lots of pictures of Greece, study other pictures of it and go, how do I make a new piece of artwork that has the essence of that with my own style put into it? Take this atmosphere here, take this shape from over here, take these things and kind of push and pull and pull it all together into something that truly is all original. And I think that this is what that Steal Like an Artist book is talking about. Find reference, explore the world, push your boundaries, try new things, and you'll be able to create something brand new. Thanks for watching. I hope this is exciting. Keep creating and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.